Looks like a watermelon graveyard over here. Hi guys. So I'm out here at the range and um, before I begin, let me show you something. I, I was having a bit of a problem going to the, the normal gun range, so I found myself a nice secluded location. And it's got a bit of security as well to keep, you know, other people out so I can shoot here alone in private. Here, let me show you what I'm talking about. This is the security I'm talking about. Nothing too much. I didn't want to go overboard, just enough to keep out, you know, the, the riffraff. So, uh, 16 to 18 foot high double razor wire fence. What I am testing today are these right here. They're the Aero Magnum rounds from Al Clark uh, from Aero Magnum. What I'm testing today is this, the Aero Magnum Devastator rounds. Now these are an amazing round, top notch. The, the fit and finish on these rounds is unmatched by any. Let me see if I can get one out right here. They're actually coated in Teflon, which makes them extremely slick, slick to the touch. The other benefit of these rounds being coated in Teflon is that over time as you shoot them through your barrel, your barrel's actually gonna get a little layer of Teflon in it which will help keep it clean. Also, you're not touching and handling lead since it is coated in Teflon, it's keeping you safe from the lead as well. All right, enough talking about it, let's get this sighted in and blow some watermelons up. All right, let's do this. <sighs> So a little bit about this gun right here. On the front of it, I have the newest suppressor from Pitbull Air Guns. And I'm using their single shot tray as well, Pitbull Air Guns single shot tray. It's all 3D printed and it's super affordable price. And you can get this at pitbullairguns.com. So you just slide that in, take your round. It sits right in there easy. Alright, let's go see where I hit. Got a real nice grouping there. I am shooting at 25 yards. I know the gun can do a lot more than that. I'm getting this thing ready for a specific purpose. We go check the target, adjust my scope, and we should be all set to go from there. Alright, here's how I'm going to adjust my scope. And it takes a lot of the in-between shooting right out of the mix. I have my laser sight attaches to a Picatinny rail. I'm going to attach it to the built-in Picatinny rail on my bipod. I'm going to put the laser sight on my, my group where those three rounds I shot hit, which are all stacked on top of each other. So I'm gonna keep my crosshairs on the spot where I was aiming, and I'm going to put the laser on the group it made. Once those are both lined up and locked in, I'm gonna then adjust the scope crosshairs over to the laser point and I should be theoretically dead on take a few more shots make sure everything's perfect get back to it laser sights all attached now it should be really simple to sight the scope in now the only catch to this is if you're doing it on a very sunny day sometimes the sun can overpower the laser and you won't be able to pick it up but I think I can uh, manage right here. You know, if I zoomed out on the scope, I could probably pick the laser sight up a lot easier. So, there's a tip for you. All right, here we go. Now we're in business.
special note when setting up the laser on the gun, don't put it on a bipod Picatinny rail because that flexes a little bit. I was wondering why I would get it perfect and then go to just double check it and it was off. It was because it was flexing. I powered through it though, got it sighted in. So that's just a little tip to keep in mind if you're doing it. Put it on like a solid permanent rail on the gun. Uh, <laughs> learn from my mistakes like I always say. Here's the proof, here's the pizza box I was shooting at. Here are my first three rounds. I fired a total of four shots. One, two, three, and I don't know if you can see after I did my laser sight adjustment, four right there. I could spend time and, and try and push it back down and get it dead on, but who knows, maybe I moved the gun a little bit when I pulled the trigger. I, I'm not really experienced with this gun yet. I'm gonna leave it right there. I'm gonna get shooting the fun stuff now. All right, here's the first watermelon. I'm gonna shoot it with an arrow magnum round and hopefully the exploding watermelon doesn't ruin the camera. There is my camera. Don't shoot the camera. Bye bye. So, entry and exit, all the way through. I'm gonna shoot this a few more times. Okay, second round into the same watermelon. Third round. Let's go see. Oh, it is just pulverized mush inside. The pulp of the watermelon has just been completely like torn apart inside from the shock. The watermelon has just been like disintegrated inside. It's good though. Alright, I got three more to shoot and some other stuff. Okay, so we've seen what it'll do to one watermelon. What about two watermelons in a row? I was gonna shoot these each individually I think this might be cool to see what happens with two as well. It's gonna pass through this one. Maybe the round will start to tumble a bit in this one. And we'll see what it does in the second one. Here we have two watermelons. Uh, let's see, one there and one right behind it. I'm actually gonna go adjust the one right now. Hold on. All right. Just went down and adjusted them. Maybe I'll go adjust it even back a little bit, just a bit. Oh, that looks good. All right. We're hot. We're live. Oh, I was going to air the gun up. Damn. Okay, hold on. All right, the gun's aired back up. Don't miss. Oh. That looked cool. Oh, wow, here's the round right here. It didn't even go through. That's cool. Okay, look at this. All right. So it comes in, creates a wound cavity that follows like that. So. Oh, and then the same thing on the bottom. So, that's pretty cool. And it just pulverizes all this right to mush. The plan is, I'm gonna shoot an arrow magnum round at this watermelon that's now on its side. You know, here's the stem on, you know, on this end and 
you know what I mean. You know what I mean, it's on its side. Then I'm gonna shoot a 129 grain boat tail, uh, non-hollow point at this watermelon here, which is on its end, and it has half of the last watermelon butted up against it. I'm gonna do them both at the same time. We'll see what happens. Also, the 129 grain boat tail, I'm gonna assume it's hitting somewhere where the arrow magnum's hitting, but I really don't know for sure since the gun isn't sighted in for this round and I'm gonna keep it sighted in for the arrow magnum. So I might hit it, I might shoot the camera. We'll see. That'll do some damage. I don't know what I hit. I believe I hit it right dead center. Let's go look at that. Man, the difference is instantly noticeable. This is what the Aero Magnum did. Plowed all the way through. Let's see if I can't find a round inside of it. No, that kept going, that round kept going. Just pulverized it to mash. Once again, you can see the, the wound cavity, boom and out you know initial wound cavity about the size of my fist then you know maybe about a two inch diameter circle leading out and this round let's see if it went and so it did go in through the second half of the watermelon you can see right there so it did hit square on its mark wow so the two rounds have pretty much the same impact point there's your entry hole about the size of the tip of my finger and uh, your exit hole still about the size of the tip of my finger so this is the exit wound remember so I'm gonna orient it Wow, it pretty much just bored a hole the size of maybe one of those thick magic markers. All the way through was the wound cavity. The watermelon is pretty much still intact. Here, on this watermelon, the inside is just this pulverized mesh. And on this watermelon, it's still firm and, and watermelon inside. I mean, as, as odd as it is to say, it's still watermelon. It's still watermelon. I can't believe I took this round deer hunting. If I'd have actually shot a deer with this round, if I had perfect placement, it would have eventually maybe bled out, but it would have caused the deer a lot of suffering. Uh, wow, I'm glad I, I did this. From now on, that's the round I'm using. The round that, that goes through and mushrooms out to, to that right there. Well, there's only one thing left to do. Stack all the parts up and shoot them. You could put this watermelon back on the shelf and sell it. This watermelon, maybe not. Not so much. We'll see what they do here. Watermelon jigsaw puzzle. We'll go this way with this one. And we'll stack this guy on the end. Yeah, that looks scientific. The last of the watermelons, I probably will shoot maybe two rounds at this. Um, this is an Aero Magnum. All right, let's try one of the boat tails. This is not an Aero Magnum round. This is a 129 grain boat tail. I'll shoot it right next to it. Actually, let's see if I could stack it. Looks like this dog can shoot. <laughs> oh, got another little Aero Magnum present. So it went through and just kind of sat right up next to the skin. This is how I found everything. I put it back the way I found it. So this is the first watermelon. First round, 
was an aero magnum, second round was the boat tail. Just for fun, I actually stacked them right on top of each other, going through. The aero magnum was sandwiched right there between the first two rounds. When I lifted it up, it fell on the ground right there. This watermelon has seen better days. There's that round right there. I'll put it over with my other one. The boat tail kept going and I think it exited out the bottom of this. So I've got some spray paint cans here and I set it up. I'm gonna top is white, bottom is black. I'm gonna try and hit the base of the white one then take off the black one. See if they'll uh, both stay while I do it. Where'd they go? There they are. Oh shit. <laughs> Part of that landed right next to me on the other side of the fence. Holy crap. That can somehow flew backwards high, high, high. I'm shooting from right here, all right? That can went over the fence and landed right there. There's the can, there's the camera. Uh, where should I shoot it? Yeah, right in the middle, why not? Oh, it just spun around on the ground, that's cool. Exit wound, entry wound. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed that. I am in love with this combination right now. I can't wait to get it out and actually do some damage with it. I've got to go figure out how to get watermelon off the lens of my camera, so I will see you guys later. Shooting stars. Didn't even get to